um, and say welcome everyone to our uh, weekly call. As you should now see on your devices, we are um, recording. Um, the main focus for the call today will be just to pick up on uh, Google's recent announcement of it uh, prototyping uh, ECH, uh, encrypted client hello, um, in Chrome. Um, so we'll cover that and then time permitting, we'll see if there's any other business that anyone uh, wishes to raise. Um, but uh, let's, let, let's go straight off to uh, uh, the, the, the first matter, though, which is uh, Google and its um, uh, ECH prototyping. So I'll hand over to uh, Kenji, um, who I think many of you will know is the uh, I think product manager, uh, Kenji, for uh, uh, the Chrome <laughs> product. Um, and I'll leave you to sort of run with this. And uh, after you've sort of covered what you want to cover, we'll then move to questions. Continuously uh, during this period, one within the time. And, uh, and I, could I ask those of you who aren't talking, if you haven't already done so, if you wouldn't mind just putting your mute on um, so we avoid any unexpected interruptions. Uh, so, Kenji, um, over to you. Um, the floor is yours. All right. Um, so I, I'm one of the product manager working on Chrome. There are like a lot of people working on Chrome. Uh, but in the past, I've, I've done a DNS over HTTPS. And so this time around, I'm also managing the um, ECH and created the client Hello. And um, I think a couple of weeks ago, we sent um, an intent to prototype. So this is like very early on in the stage of implementing this feature. And so I wanted to, to reach out and like see if um, uh, folks have questions or concerns um, with the intent of like informing how we go like implementing this feature. And so I think Andrew, you had collected a, a few questions. Uh, so we could go over those, for instance. Is there any preference on how, how we do this? Yep, I think let's let's maybe run through those uh, first, and then obviously add anything, uh, Kenji. Just uh, in in terms of you might perhaps just want to just uh, maybe just pray see the uh, the prototyping announcement to give it a context, and then maybe we run through those and then see um, see if that then prompts any further questions uh, as a result. Would that make sense? Yeah. So it's it's very much for the same reason that we've been doing DNS for HTTPS. It's the fact that uh, there are parts of the way people connect to like websites that are not private. And so um, like DNS or HTTPS was one. And then the, the fact that when you connect to an HTTPS website, you have to say, hey, I, I want to connect to this specific host that you have. Um, that happens in the clear. And, and so we wanted to make that uh, private so that uh, I can like third parties can't can like observe that being a thing. Um, so that's the motivation. Perfect. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, um, sh should we just run through the questions then? Um, maybe use that as a to a prompt a discussion. Um, sure. Let's see where that takes us. So, should I read out the questions? Will that be helpful, Kenji? And then you can just respond to uh, each of those in turn yeah that sounds good okay um and these are roughly speaking in the order that i got them um so uh hopefully uh, that they'll make sense um all right so uh just to, to take these in that order uh, ech is very new and not widely deployed in the network um so will you chrome uh, be partnering with uh, specific site hosts or CDNs to test ECH, uh, and if so, which ones? Yeah, so at the moment we we don't have like specific plans um, like that we can share because it's very early early days. Um, and so if people have like a suggestion, like maybe people in in the in the meeting might be interested, like we'll like be interested in like working with um, as many partners as we can. Um, because yes, it is very new. Um, like the way we interpret the draft might be different from what people like uh, see it. And so it would be good to have partners that we can work with so that um, we we can either refine the, the spec so that everyone has the same understanding 
so we'll be looking for, for partners eventually, but it's a bit early at the moment. Okay, so uh, I guess an open uh, invitation for any would-be partners to, uh, to, to, to come forward uh, then in that case. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, will the DOE connections in Chrome have ECH or not? That's the second question. Okay, so on this one, from our point of view, um, like we treat any HTTPS connection just the same. And so like DOE is obviously happening over HTTPS. And so like from the implementation point of view, it is just um, handled like any regular HTTPS connection. And so if eventually that process results in like ECH keys, then Chrome will use them. Um, for the initial prototype, uh, because we only limit the scope, uh, we only plan to create the new records over a DAO uh, and not cla classic DNS. Uh, but maybe in the future, we might extend to classic DNS. So I don't know if that answered the question, but uh, this is the way we think about things. And for the, the short term, uh, we all scope down to uh, something a bit simpler. Thank you. Um, and will ECH be a user selectable option? Yeah, so this one was very interesting. Um, I like we're not aware of any end user need that would require like an option. Uh, and so we currently have no plan to make that available like through like settings. But if people have like like feedback on like actually there, there might be a user need, um, like would be interested in that. But but so far we we don't think this is necessary. Okay. Pretty clear. Um, uh, what tools, if any, uh, will be offered to uh, networks such as enterprise networks that wish to disable ECH for their users? Um, and the question uh, included mention of uh, sort of canary domain as an example, not necessarily the right in, in this context. But uh, so are you thinking of, of any option to allow uh, uh, network admins to disable ECH if they feel that's appropriate um, in, for, for their needs? Yeah, so on this, um, <clears throat> I don't want we, we think that IT administrator, like for enterprise education deployments, especially, um, they can already configure the DNS endpoint, like through like group policies, including DNS over HTTPS. And uh, we believe that that should be sufficient to meet the filtering needs independently of uh, encrypted client hello. And so I don't want we have no plan for control over ECH. Uh, because if you think about it, like if we were to provide um, a group policy where IT admin could disable the, the feature, then it will result in leaking information private to the company or the school beyond the scope of its internal network. Uh, because if you turn it off, it goes like in the clear, uh, like end to end. And so that, that makes that information visible to any intermediaries. So that's that's not very appealing to us. It's possible that we are missing something, but I don't want that. That's uh, how we think about uh, the space. Um, obviously, as we make progress, when we have like more, uh, like something that people can play with behind the flag and whatnot, we'll be engaging with our own enterprise ed education customer, um, just to confirm that we got that right. Uh, yeah. But that being said, if people have like initial feedback that we should consider, then I will be interested in hearing that as well. Um, and, I, and I think a supplementary uh, on that, so to take that from the enterprise, perhaps more to the consumer environment, I know there are some tools that do SNI analysis um, for things like parental controls. So that might be a sort of a different context where maybe there will be a requirement uh, in, in some circumstances to disable ECH. Um, to, to ensure that that, that, that applies. Um, but as you say, uh, Kenji, uh, that'd be up to people to then feed you particularly use cases to uh, help uh, understand that. Um, will the implementation be strictly compliant to um, draft IETF TLS uh, ESNI 07 um, or indeed 08, which I think it's just uh, uh, coming up now or or imminently, um, or will um, will Google be making any proprietary modifications to cover some of the gaps in the spec? Um, 
So um, what, what exactly are you implementing? Uh, in other words, I think is a question there, Kenji. Yeah, so for the first iteration, we are going to go uh, after the draft 08. Uh, but that being said, like those things are going to evolve. And so we expect to uh, reflect important change in the newer draft and, and even like possibly track, tracking a whole new draft if it's necessary. So um, like during the experimental fails, like we, we are going to, um, to try and to catch like the, the change that makes the most sense to help um, like the experiment and making, making sure that we have something that works. Um, so that's the, the, the current plan is uh, 08 is what we are looking at at the, at the moment. Is the most current one that you, you can go for, to be fair. Um, and then to encapsulate a longish question and comment, uh, what, what's the, the, the fallback plan if uh, ECH uh, fails? Uh, how would you see the client falling back uh, from what? Well, uh, will it just go back to uh, uh, in the clear for SNI, or, or did you have something else in mind? Would it fail closed, for example? Yeah, so as I said, uh, like in the beginning, we see um, ECH as an important piece for improving privacy on the web. And uh, as I said, also, we also believe that IT administrators have the tools and choice they need to secure their, man their managed environments. And so given that, and also the fact that websites like will eventually opt into ECH with the expectation that it helps improve their users' privacy, uh, will show an error page if ECH fails. Um, if you if you take a step back, I, I don't think it's that different from like HTTPS if you think about it. And so, um, per principle, like browsers are not going to downgrade to HTTP when HTTPS fail. And so the same like makes sense to to have for ECH. Yeah, that makes sense. Um... Do, yeah, I think we cover the next one. Which well, I'll, I'll ask it anyway, just for for completeness. Um, which is, um, do do you see a case for um, standardising on non uh, yeah, ECH on managed private networks? Um, or again, is that where you're yeah. you're asking for feedback on use cases to help inform your thinking at this? Yeah. Time? So so for that, maybe like like the the answer I gave earlier is still apply, but maybe to to build on that, um, one thing that makes it super diff like difficult for us is we don't know like the network is like um, like the relationship that the user has with the network is not clear and there's no way for us to know what it means, and so if the network were able to disable like privacy features or like security features. Um, that, that would be bad, right? Because we, we have no way of knowing that this is what the user want. Uh, and also for ECH, uh, the privacy removal is not like self-contained within the, the, the internal network. It, it just like outside of it. And so the implication of like um, allowing a network that the user might not trust or have a relationship with decide how good the privacy or security is is like very uh, concerning. So like maybe there are, there are use cases that we could look into, but uh, on, like in principle, it, it sounds like this, this would be very hard to, um, to accept. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, what are your thoughts on interoper interoperability testing? Um, do you have any, any specific thoughts on that just yet? Yeah, so... Uh, I'm guessing that maybe this this could mean two things. One would be um, in terms of like the implementation itself. Um, and so there we think that the process we've been using in the past, for instance, for TLS 1.3 uh, will, will work. Um, and so we expect to work with other implementers um, and like share feedback on what we, what we when we read like a spec, like maybe we interpret it this way and maybe other folks like interpret it like a different way. Um, so making sure that we have the same like understanding of it. And then we are going to test our limitation against each other. And also uh, as the protocol matures, 
um, this like the, this whole exercise is also to help make the spec like easier to understand so that like everyone has the same understanding. Um, but beyond that, um, when we did TLS 1.3, we also had a TLS test suite. And so hopefully we, we can do some like similar things where we'll have like a series of tests that people can look into and, and test their implementations again against. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's one thing. And in terms of deployment consideration, um, like such like DNS components, um, like this is this is going to be a bit new. And so we expect that to be an ongoing learning and like improvement area. Um, and tentatively, we'll be looking into what we can do with Chrome Dev Tools to help like um, folks understand if their setup is like configured the, the right way or not. Um, and maybe some like debugging information in the net logs um, as well as like sharing guidance. So this is roughly what we are looking into. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and of course, that's uh, ironically since sending over those questions, I saw uh, interoperability testing came up on the TLS uh, mailing list for any of you that follow that. So that's something of a, a current topic um, for, for, for the uh, working group anyway, um, in terms of general uh, interoperability testing. Um, okay. Um, on, in the briefing note that, that you sent the link to on the Eddie list, uh, Kenji, it did say specifically that uh, about the, the, it didn't currently support Linux uh, in terms of platforms. So just for completeness, is that a temporary um, omission? Do you have, are there any plans to add support for Linux uh, uh, in the future or um, not yeah. at the moment? Um, this is definitely like temporary. Um, the, the reason is there is a dependency on DNS over HTTPS, which is currently not implemented in Chrome for Linux. Um, it's still being worked on. So hopefully, um, like in 2021, we'll have support for DO on Linux and also ECH at the same time. I don't know the exact timing, but uh, we are hoping that in 2021, we can like close those gaps. Which segues neatly into perhaps a final question, then we're, we're, we're open up. So raise your virtual hands um, using the uh, facility on uh, Zoom if, if you do have questions. Um, in terms of time scales generally, what, uh, do you have a sort of a target uh, release for uh, ECH support in Chrome uh, yet, uh, Kenji, or is it too soon yet to, to predict that? Yeah, I think it's it's too soon because there are like so many like moving pieces and um, it's as, as people have said, it's very new. So like who knows what's going to break and we'll have to figure out like a way to fix. Yeah. So yeah, not not at this moment. Yeah, fair enough. I guess the standard isn't ratified yet. So uh, you've, you've got a good, good, perfectly good reason to wait at least um, for that. Uh, now, I've seen a few comments on the chat. I can't yet see any raised hand. Anyone wants to come in um, uh, and actually bring those out loud. So shall I maybe just call off some of the ones from the chat? Um, see if we've covered them. Um, so I see Jim Reed has asked whether ECH will only be available for selected uh, DOE, DOE services. Um, I think that's good. Yeah, so I guess on this one, like we don't have any like plan to, to limit ECH to specific DOE services. Any DOE services that like supports it um, will, will like work with the implementation. The, the only thing is we want to start with doing um, DNS over HTTPS only, like for scope reason, but eventually we would like to to also have um, like classic DNS also as like an option that works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I th think you used the analogy of uh, HTTPS, I think earlier, uh, Kenji, which maybe gives a indication of, what, of how you think it will be adopted o over time, uh, which which is helpful. Yeah. One one thing to to maybe clarify. Um, like adoption is going to take um, like more more time, I would say, because the website themselves have to opt in into ECH. Um, so that's that's going to take time. It's not like uh, we implement this feature and then magically everything like just use it. Yeah, good point. Um, okay. 
Um, I see Hugh. I'm not sure that's a question or a, more a comment, uh, Hugh. If it is a question, by all means, just raise your virtual hand and you can jump in. Otherwise, I'll skip over it. Um, similarly, Paul <laughs> Vixie, that, that is a several Pauls uh, on, on the queue. Um, again, I think that's more a comment than a question in, in the chat, but please jump in. Um, just raise your virtual hand if, if it is indeed a question. Um, so Ian uh, has raised a question so uh, um, uh, through his virtual hand. So Ian, do you want to come on? And uh, Yeah, um, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, so last time I checked, um, the, um, the identifiers for the DNS records for ECH were not yet assigned. Um, so I wondered whether you'd looked at that and uh, what you plan to do. Thank you. Yeah, so that might be a bit too technical for me. I'm not, I'm not sure. I can follow up uh, later with the team if, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. To pop, pop me an email afterwards, Ian, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll capture that. Um, uh, and then, uh, yeah, if you could, wouldn't mind, Kenji, that would be helpful. Um, I see Pat Tarpey has raised two questions uh, in the chat. Um, ECH uses HTTPS SVC records. Um, are there any DNS server software related factors preventing deployment? And so maybe on that one, I think that's that's where we um, we want to start with DNS over HTTPS because this is like new. It's also um, happening over HTTPS, and so there is less risk of intermediaries like changing things along the way. Um, so those will be the risk when we move to classic DNS. There, there might be things that don't work quite well. Yeah. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Okay. And the second question, I'm not sure it's necessarily Chrome specific, but uh, does ECH and uh, HTTPS SVC mean that HSTS is dead? Um, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think I will have to go back to the team because if I say yes and it turned out to not be the case, <laughs> they would be upset with me. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll capture that one afterwards, uh, uh, Pat. But th thanks for asking it. Um, uh, so people are keeping the chat busy so do, do feel free to raise your virtual hands and ask directly but uh, uh, Jason has asked is Google planning on implementing a test website um, that opts in as part of this trial so um, I mean for internal testing we might have like uh, like something we can play with but um, in, in terms of like getting insight about like actual like users um, I think we'll prefer an actual website because if we make a test website and people don't visit it, it, it like it, it won't generate enough data. So I think we'll be looking for partners. Okay. Um, and a point of clarification, I think, from uh, Paul Vixie. Um, for classic DNS, do you mean dot? Because classic DNS doesn't otherwise use HTTPS. Yeah, when I say classic uh, DNS, I mean DNS over port 40, uh, 53, sorry. Okay. So yeah, the, the fact it doesn't use HTTPS is going to be uh, creating all sorts of issues, I guess. Yeah. Um, any plans to use ECH on Google domains, YouTube, et cetera? Um, so yeah, on that I'm I'm not a product manager for like those products, so I don't I don't know. Yeah. Is the answer? I, I was assuming you might go there, <laughs> uh, which is fair enough. That's definitely not a, go, a, a Chrome uh, question, but uh, uh, okay. Um, does anyone else want to uh, jump in with a question? Uh, feel free to raise your virtual hand if you want to chime in. We give everyone a, a, a few moments to think. Whilst they're thinking, I mean, in terms of when this will actually start, when would there be any visibility of any, of any actual prototyping taking place that people might see, Kenji? I, well, I mean, it, like tentatively, maybe 
around the end of Q1 next year, like there might be something that people can can play with, like behind the flag. Uh, it's my rough guess. Okay, so sort of end March time, thereabouts. Yeah, that that won't be like Q1 is not going to be something that is enabled. It's just uh, something for developers to like play with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, that would be ITF 110, possibly. Who knows? Um, if we're still doing such things at that point. Um, again, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if folks are familiar with uh, the when when I say behind the flag, it means that if you go to Chrome and you open a new tab and you type Chrome colon slash slash flags, then you can turn on and off like the experimental features. That's what I mean. Oh, okay. Um, uh, right, right. So you've, I think you've preempted Pat's question on the chat, which is about will there be a developer download at Q1 next year? But from what you just said, there, there won't need to be a developer download. It would just be by, uh, by using that feature then. Um, I think is what you said, uh, Kenji, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's usually we we recommend people to use uh, Chrome Canary because that's the one that is going to get the latest fix. Um, and um, until we have something that we are confident with is going to be behind a flag disabled by default. Yeah, yeah, which makes good sense. Uh, okay. Um, and thank you. I see you put in the chat the specific on that, which is really helpful. Um, in terms of sort of specific use case requirements, such as um, some sort of fallback or turn on off feature for enterprises, is there any formal process that you're using to gather that or? <laughs> Any any views on how you'd like people to to share their thoughts yeah. with you? Um, usually, what we do is whenever we have a feature that might um, have some sort of impact on education or enterprise deployments, we we have it documented in the release not ahead of time, uh, even if it's not yet available, like as like a heads up. Um, the other thing we do is we obviously have like enterprise education partnerships team. And so they will like regularly talk about what's coming next. And, and so that's a way for us to say, hey, we, we have work happening on this feature. Um, like, are, are there any concern about it? Like all needs uh, and so on. Yeah. So that's what we are going to do. And um, like if folks have like feedback, um, I don't know if EDDI is the, the right mailing list for that, but um, like you, you can always send me some additional feedback or like an email. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Um, and uh, yes, I, I made an assumption at the start uh, rather foolishly. So in the event that anyone is unsure how to raise their virtual hand, you have two other options. Uh, one is just to indicate in, in the chat you, you want to raise your virtual hand and I will see that. Or if you click on participants, which will be at the bottom of the screen, um, you, you can then, you should see the option there to uh, raise raise your your hand um so apologies i should have said that uh, earlier so does and i realize i scrolled down the list to get to that point so does anyone else uh, want to come in with any questions uh, either raise your hand or any any last thoughts in the chat I see Hugh has indeed raised his virtual hand. So you passed the initiative test. Thank you, Hugh. So do come off mute and ask your question. Uh, obviously coming off mute is challenge number two. Um, I was just wondering whether, whether Kenji, you guys would um, recognize the use case of uh, a user actually wanting and therefore needing to turn off ECH in order to have HTTPS traffic pass over a private managed network and therefore would actually essentially choose for that network to, to disable it because the alternative is all HTTPS traffic being blocked, e.g. In, in an education scenario. Yeah, so on that, and like this is where I will like welcome feedback or like having the ability to, to talk to uh, IT administrator with like a setup. 
we assume that um, this this can be done like if you if you can set up the DNS, then you can do that at the DNS level. Uh, so that's the current thinking. Um, because as I said, like turning off ECH is essentially uh, making your your users' privacy worse uh, for the sake of filtering a few bad things. Maybe. So if there are like alternatives that people could use, that that would be much better. And maybe this is something that uh, people like rely on SNI because it's available today. And so maybe there might be like um, some 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 need for like adjusting to that. But I'm like I'm interested in like hearing what people think about this space. Thanks, Hugh, for the question. Um, last chance for any other questions to jump in. I see Paul has indeed done that. So Paul, uh, again, if you could come off mute, please ask your question. Thank you. In the uh, HTTP service uh, draft, uh, they are making available through DNS the, uh, the the necessary key for something like ECH. There is a existing uh, conventions, not a standard, of also putting this information into the headers of the HTTP object as a meta header, uh, specifically to avoid the need for a separate DNS lookup. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry for my ignorance. Is this something that is uh, covered in draft 08? Is this something that Chrome will do? In other words, if we were in an ed educational environment, uh, as one example of several, where uh, uh, SNI is currently used in order to whitelist certain destinations, um, and if, uh, if, if that information is encrypted, our only option would be to block the DNS lookup that would inform Chrome as to the key of the far end. This is impractical if the, there is also an HTTP meta header, uh, maybe it's actually an HTML meta header uh, that, uh, that bypasses DNS for this purpose. And I hope by this I'm able to show that there is an important use case where the security of the network is being balanced against the security of its users, such that the, uh, the network policy and the ability to whitelist certain destinations currently by SNI is absolutely vital and will be sought at whatever cost. And thank you very much for your presentation today. That's all I have. Paul. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, I'm not familiar with this specific um, element that you mentioned about um, not having to do a DNS lookup and having access to the the keys. To is it maybe a header or meta a meta tag? I'm not sure. So we'll follow up on that. Um, but maybe if um, like if if we were to implement this feature because it sounds appealing, like performance wise. Uh, to the extent that it might impact the the the, the route that I, like I I think is enough for education and, and enterprise where um, like being able to filter through the DNS um, like it sounds very reasonable for us to not enable that feature um, in an enterprise or education deployment so there might be a group policy for that like particular uh, particular feature maybe. So I, I will follow up. I will ask the team if they are aware of that. Um, but that's an interesting use case. OK, thanks, Paul. Um, I see, see a question in the chat, and then I see Paul uh, Brez also got his hand raised. So I'll ask the chat question first, um, which is, given that Microsoft shares the same underlying sort of Chromium code base. Um, does that mean that uh, ECH will be available on Edge at the same time as Chrome, Kenji? Um, it's it's a possibility. It doesn't like necessarily mean that it's going to be true. Um, Microsoft, um, although they, they, they share the same code base, they, they, they make their own decision about when to ship like different features. Um, it's also possible that they might say, well, actually, we want to like implement, it, like, implement this feature in like, a different way. Uh, that's also a possibility. 
Yeah. Um, so I guess so. maybe at some point we will we'll, we'll be nice to to have someone from Microsoft to share their plans. Yeah, and I guess that will be true for any any other browser. So using the underlying code, it will, it will be down to that. that yeah, the same goes for Samsung, uh, other folks like that. Yeah. Um, any of the folks from Microsoft are welcome to comment if if they they wish. But in the meantime, Paul, do you want to come off mute and ask your question? Um, yeah. Uh, so it's just following up really on, on what uh, Paul Vixie had said. Um, so from an education point of view, one of those scenarios for using SNI is to then choose which domains you do SSL inception on where you've got a managed environment and you've pushed out a, a, a root C, CA um, option to the devices. Um, and an example might have might be to search, filter Google searches coming back and to be able to do something stronger than safe search in Google. Um, and so we might use SNI at the moment to spot what's Google and to do interception on Google, but not on other domains. So that would be the reason that we'd want to be able to um, be able to look at the SNIs heading to Google to know which domains we're doing interception on. So we're only intercepting on things that we care about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe uh, that's perhaps some additional detail that might be helpful, Kenji, uh, and to sort of uh, give you a, a richer understanding of the use case. Um, okay. Yeah, that, that would be very useful. You know, Paul, I'll send you an email with the details. Yeah. Okay. For 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 Kenji's benefit, uh, three uh, so RM rather. So I think you specialise and have done for many years in, in the education sector, Paul. So uh, go go a sort of a strength and depth of knowledge in in that space, amongst others, I'm sure. Okay, thank you. Um, <sighs> So, so a question, I'm not sure it's really a question for Kenji in the chat uh, for, from Kurt about other OSs and apps also intending to use ECH uh, and, and, and whether it's more than just browsers, um, which I think is absolutely the case. Um, is, I don't think it's intended yeah. to be developed specifically for browsers, albeit that that's the use it's, case we're looking at here. Yeah, it's, it's clear that the, the value that uh, ECH provides is universal, and so um, it's not limited to just browsers. Yeah, okay. All right, last call for any questions from anyone. Um, and Philip has come in at the bell. So Philip, uh, yeah. question. Uh, Kenji, what Chrome will be doing with the NAS over HTTP resolver configuration? It will have its own settings for the resolver or it will be using uh, system-wide resolvers when they will become available on the operating system. Like current draft for the NAS over HTTP resolver announcement using DHCP or router advertisements. Or it will use just own settings. So if... Uh, my router gives me DNS of HTTP resolver. Will Chrome use it or not? What is the plans? I see. Um, so on that, I, I can follow up with a link to the to the blog post that explain all of that in like a lot of details. But at, at a high level, um, we shipped DNS of HTTPS on desktop and on Android. Um, the only exception is Linux, and uh, the default behavior is that. Um, if um, the, the DNS we receive via DHCP or from the OS um, is um, a DNS service that supports DNS over HTTPS, then Chrome will use the DNS over HTTPS version of that service. So it, it respects your service provider. It just um, like select the, the more private, more secure protocol if it's available. Um, users can go to the settings and, and change um, that, that default behavior from uh, two options. One is uh, selecting a DNS provider uh, that support DNS over HTTPS in case uh, they, they, they want like something very easy to use, or um, a custom form where um, users can like specify the DNS over HTTPS of their choosing. So like they are like manual options as well. So I think your question was if my Router like sends through the HTTP, hey, uh, this is a DNS service. Uh, Chrome will use that today. But if that service is will be uh, will be DNS over HTTP, over HTTPS. 
Yes. My, so, if, yeah. if the the DHCP provided DNS service is DNS like regular classic DNS, uh, Chrome will will use that. Um, if it's let's say if it's pointing to Cloudflare or Google DNS, um, then Google will oh sorry Chrome will upgrade to the DNS over HTTPS version of those services. So it's, say it's, it's the same provider auto upgrade model effectively yes. G, uh, if it detects the ability to do that. Um, okay. So, so classical DNS provider can uh, send some kind of packet which will indicate that the client can switch to DNS over HTTPS or it will be hard coded values for Cloudflare and Google DNS. I think Kenji's just posted a link in the chat, um, uh, Philip, which explains. Okay, I will have a look. Thank you. The look up. Is that right, Kenji? Yeah. I think that's what that link yeah. is. Yeah. The, the first one is the, the desktop announcement, and the second one is Android. There, there is a tiny difference for Android. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Well, on that note, um, I'm conscious it's a pr fast approaching midnight your time, Kenji. So uh, <laughs> um, thank you for taking the time out uh, of uh, for literally at the end of the day to uh, do that and give people uh, the heads up um, on, on, on the uh, prototyping plans. Um, and I'm sure there'll be some follow ups because uh, um, it, it's going to be a subject, I think, which is going to grow in interest. Um, as other clients also announce their intentions around ECH. So I think uh, kudos to uh, Chrome for, for being the first. So uh, thank you for, for doing that. And uh, you're welcome to stay on or to uh, go off and do other things, which you may well have uh, given the, the time of day um, uh, over in time. Yeah. But thank you. Um, thank you for like uh, this opportunity and uh, like the, the questions. Um, I know that I didn't answer all the question. And so if we can follow up later with do's that, that would be good. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I'm, I'm just going to have a, a rest <laughs> because as you said, it's, uh, it's a bit late, <laughs> but thanks again. And, um, this time around, like, uh, we are like very early in the stage of implementing this feature. And so we have plenty of time of going over like use case and concerns and so on. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Kenji. You. And to everybody else, where well, that brings us on to uh, uh, any other business. So uh, I'll just open up and see, does anyone have um, any, anything you would like to raise um, in the last sort of five to 10 minutes or so? So Bowen's come in and I see Glenn has done just that. So uh, do you want to uh, jump on, Glenn? Yeah, two things. It's draft cutoff day. Uh, so <laughs> be, be aware that the draft cutoff for anybody submitting to ADD uh, for the upcoming 109 meeting is coming up in hours, not, not days. Uh, and the other thing is, because um, I got caught by this and only discovered it at the last minute, is uh, there's a different process t this time for getting your ITF shirt. And, and, and somebody told me about it. And it turns out you have, to, you have to go to your dashboard and actually request a shirt. Uh, for the ITF meeting. So I don't want anybody to miss their important ITF shirt. An email just went out today from the ITF and there's a, a paragraph in there about getting your shirt. So that's how you get your t-shirt. Fantastic. Priorities. <laughs> so, uh, and I must admit my uh, the ITF 108 t-shirt arrived only last week. Uh, and what a super attractive color it is. I'm almost tempted to wear it just to uh, break a few cameras. Um, but th yeah, thank you for the heads up and a useful reminder on the cutoff. Uh, uh, so anyone that hasn't started writing your uh, submissions yet, you better get cracking because you've not got long uh, to, to get them in. Um, I, th I presume it's uh, midnight tonight UTC, so uh, only a few hours left. Thank you, Glenn. Um, anyone else with any other business you want to uh, come in on? Can I give a moment for people to... Uh, Raise your hand should you wish to. And maybe whilst you're thinking, um, I'll give you a reminder that next week at 4 p.m. Uh, UTC, uh, Luca Dera will be joining us um, 
from NTOP. He came on a few months back, for those of you with a good memory, and we'll be giving an update on the uh, work that they've been doing in the last few months to enable them to detect DOE uh, streams within HTTPS. Um, and without stealing his thunder, I think they're claiming success rate with less than 5% false positives. So uh, the tool does appear to be working, but uh, to find out more, come on uh, 4 p.m. UTC next week, and uh, you can hear firsthand from Luca um, on how that's, that's going. Uh, right, last chance for anyone with any other business that you want to uh, bring on. I can see no virtual hands. Um, in which case, anyone that's also attending UK NOF today, um, uh, don't forget to go back onto that. It's still continue, continuing for another uh, hour and a half, I think, or so. Uh, Equally, IGF 2020 is running through this week. So there's a lot of good stuff um, happening um, in the world of the internet at the moment. So have a great week. Thanks for coming on, everyone. And uh, we'll speak again roughly this time next week. Thanks all.